I'm Gabriel Shipton. I'm Julian Assange's brother. Um, so I've ad been advocating for Julian for the last couple of years. I'm a filmmaker as well. And that's led you to creating a film about Julian's experience. Yeah, so, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, uh, you know, over the past two years, we've uh, been shooting uh, with my father, uh, who's Julian's father, and Stella, Julian's fiance, uh, following them as they uh, advocate around the world for Julian, um, followed them during the hearings uh, in October last year, mm -hmm. all through that period. Um, yeah, and we've just released the film at Sydney Film Festival, premiered it last weekend on Sunday. And yeah, here we are. Awesome. So for those who, who don't know about Julian's story, so when I was telling a few people I'm going to be interviewing Julian's uh, assigned his brother, they, they said, who's Julian? So these are people in the freedom movement here in Australia who still don't know his story. So can you tell us who he is and, and why you're here today? Yeah, so Julian uh, is the founder of WikiLeaks. Uh, WikiLeaks is a, uh, it's still going, it's a website um, that hosts uh, source documents, uh, basically, so leaked source documents. Uh, it, you know, when in 2006 Julian started WikiLeaks, uh, he, you know, saw a way of using uh, cryptography and using the architecture of the internet um, to have uh, leaked source documents available to everybody uh, and that they could not be censored. Uh, so you would have, you know, someone would be able to leak to, to WikiLeaks anonymously and Julian, uh, that you would be able to publish those documents and they could never be taken down. And it's still the case today. WikiLeaks has millions of documents online and uh, yeah, they're still up. So why would someone whistleblow? Why do whistleblowers exist? Well, I think because people have principles and, uh, you know, deep down when we see that something is wrong, uh, you know, uh, we, I think we all know that when, when something is wrong and we all have principles and uh, whistleblowers are particularly brave people uh, who, you know, who have very strong principles and when they see something wrong or when they see something, uh, you know, that, that, do, that goes against them, then, then they feel the need uh, to blow the whistle and, 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 you know, make that information public. So where does Julian fit in? So, so Julian created this infrastructure. So if you were a whistleblower, mm -hmm. uh, you could uh, anonymously, he has anonymous Dropbox for WikiLeaks. So if you were a whistleblower, you could take, uh, you know, say you had a thumb drive with some information or whatever, you could put it into the anonymous Dropbox and then it would go to WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks would, uh, verify that information, make sure the documents uh, were, um, you know, true documents, uh, you know, true source documents, and then they would publish, publish that information. Uh, they would partner with news organisations around the world, you know, the, uh, with the Chelsea Manning Leaks, they partnered with hundreds of news organisations to maximise the impact of uh, Chelsea Manning's leaks, uh, you know, so news organisations all around the world uh, all uh, pooled their resources uh, to report on, on these Chelsea Manning leaks, which sort of, uh, that was one of the, the uh, inventions of Julian, you know, using uh, what comes from the collaborative nature of like programming and, you know, computer programming and applying that to journalism. And it has this way of uh, keeping these media organisations honest um, and also maximising the reach of uh, the revelations from the whistleblower. So if you're a whistleblower, you can look at WikiLeaks and say, well, you know, what is the best route for, for this information? How am I going to get this information out there um, to as many people as possible to try and have the biggest impact possible? You know, whether that's uh, stopping a war or, you know, revealing torture or mm -hmm. revealing corruption. Uh, how, how am I, as a whistleblower, going to make the biggest impact? And that's what was so uh, dangerous for those in power about WikiLeaks, is that a whistleblower could take uh, their information there and, uh, you know, blow it up to the whole world. And so that was very attractive. That became very attractive for whistleblowers because, you know, they all want to make the biggest impact. They all want to uh, see, 
the injustices corrected and Julian created a system uh, that would, would assist them to maximum effect. And in his pursuit for freedom, he himself, I guess, became entrapped of, in, in, the, in the snares of, of the powers that be. Um, so, where does, so where is Julian now and, so Julian, and where has he been for the last few years? So Jul, uh, Julian has been, so it's his third year now in maximum security uh, prison. Uh, outside uh, of London, Belmarsh uh, Maximum Security Prison. He's a remand prisoner there, so uh, he hasn't been uh, convicted. He has no conviction. Um, he's an so innocent man. He's, he's been charged uh, with sourcing and publishing documents, you know, what journalists do every day. Uh, there's, a, there's an indictment that has, you know, basically 18 counts. And if you read the indictment, it's... Uh, it's, you know, it basically says, oh, you, you have been charged with, with journalism uh, and, and this indictment carries a maximum sentence of 175 years in prison. Uh, be previous, be uh, before that, he, was, um, he took refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy uh, for seven years. And then, uh, you know, in 2017, he published uh, Vault 7, uh, the Vault 7 CIA um, leaks, which was... Um, you know, a big leak about the CIA's hacking tools and things like that. And they published a lot of information about that. And at that point is when uh, uh, Mike Pompeo, uh, who was then head of director of the CIA, uh, said that they were going to target uh, WikiLeaks as a non-state hostile intelligence agency. So that language that he used um, allowed WikiLeaks to be treated, say, like... Uh, the Iranian uh, Secret Service, so so that the CIA could could use um, you know it could use the same measures they do against say the Russian FSB or the Iranian Secret Service. They could use those measures against WikiLeaks, and so from that point on, uh, you know uh, things have just gotten worse and worse and worse for Julian um, until this point he's at now. Uh, so at the moment, I see that everything that's happening to Julian has to be looked at through that lens uh, of, of uh, you know, Mike Pompeo saying, we're gonna go after this person. And you know, that's, that's how we've got to this point now. Mm. So where do you see this, where do you see this ending up? And if you don't want to, to end up there, how can Australians help? Well, I think, you know, uh, we, you know, as we sort of, as Julian's family, we live a bit in, f in fear, basically, that he will, um, you know, lose his life, you know, in this battle. Um, so that's, that's the sort of worst outcome uh, for, for us. Um, so I, I hope it doesn't end up there. Um, but I, at the moment, I can't see, I can't see, um, you know, this over the past, 10 years, what we've seen is, you know, consistent persecution of Julian. You know, the UN found out, found that he's been psychologically tortured. Um, you, know, these rev you know, these revelations about the CIA, I, I can't see that uh, ending uh, without, um, you know, a public uprising, like a pub, you know, a movement uh, from the population. So I think, you know, in Australia, we have to get in touch with our, um, Get in touch with our MPs. You know, let them know how how much this concerns you. Or uh, also, you know, take it to the streets. Activism on the streets always works. We've had protests outside each screening of this film at the Sydney Film Festival. There's been street protests. Uh, there'll be a one another one today in George Street. So all this sort of stuff, uh, you know, makes a difference. Uh, and you know, people see it. I think you know, you with the with the protests, the anti-lockdown protests. I think they've had an effect as well, you know, people taking it to the streets, the leaders see that and they say, well, these people, you know, we have to sort of listen uh, to what these people want. Mm. So I think that's very effective. Uh, what's the price for telling the truth? Uh, I know you're saying he's received threats and um, essentially attacks on his life. There's a lot of people today who, who want to tell the truth and are afraid to, but here we have a a worst case scenario and clearly it's someone who wanted the truth to be out there 
Yeah. Well, what's the price that he's paid leading up until this point? Well, uh, I don't... I remember listening to an interview saying that he would constantly have to change the way he looks, he would change his haircuts, uh, so that when he traveled around the world, he would avoid essentially assassinate, assassination attempts and those types of things. Mm. How real is that? I think it's, it's um, you know, there was, so in September, there was a big investigation by these uh, three journalists in Washington, D.C. for Yahoo News. Uh, they had 30 sources from within the CIA, intelligence community, and the White House uh, that found, that, you know, that leaked to them that there were these plots uh, originating from within the CIA to kidnap and murder Julian. Uh, the plots to kidnap him even made it all the way to the White House. So there was, so Mike Pompeo took these plans to the, to the lawyers and the lawyer said, well, if you kidnap him, you know, what are you going to do with him? You know, we don't have any charges you laid to him. So, you know, are you going to take him to Guantanamo or something like that? Like, what are you going to do with this person? So that led the DOJ in the US uh, to come up with these charges, to come up with these espionage charges for publishing, uh, sourcing and publishing information. So I think the, you know, if you reveal, you know, if you shine this light uh, on the powerful, um, they're going to come after you. And, and Julian is an example of that. You know, they're making an example of him. You know, look, if this is what happens if, if you uh, expose our corruption, if you expose, uh, you know, the, our war crimes, if you, um, you know, expose that we torture people, if you, this is what is going to happen to you. And that's why it's so important that, you know, we all sort of rally around and, and free Julian, because then that means, uh, you know, Julian's freedom is all our freedom, right? Mm -hmm. Like, as, as long right. as this keeps happening, uh, as long as you aren't allowed to tell the truth, as long as you aren't allowed to expose war crimes, corruption, you know, we're, we're essentially living under tyranny. You know, we're, we're not living in a, you know, in a democracy at all. Uh, if, this, if these uh, people can carry on with impunity, uh, you know, behaving corruptly or, or, or torturing people, uh, then, um, you know, we're not really living in a democracy. At what point did it... Sorry, it's very hard for me to hear this because you know, truth is obviously something that we fight for um, at Turning Point, even at a much smaller scale. We, we've been followed by cops and stuff. So I'm hearing this going, okay, this is, this is real. This is the price of, of fight, fighting for truth. Yeah. Um, what would you say to everyday Aussies who, who believe freedom is worth protesting for? When I'm going to talk about mandates and vaccines. But there are people protesting today with the risk of receiving fines. The last protest we were at, uh, people were copying $5,000 fines for being there, but they were still there. Mm. What can everyday Aussies learn from Julian's story? Well, I think, um, yeah, like I, you know, like I was saying to, to Father Dave, that um, you know, Julian's persecution is, is another revelation. So you know, you can look at all, the, all these, um, all, you can look at a whole bunch of journalists who sort of um, have never, you know, never been put in a position, you know, they've sort of never confronted power in this way. They've never, um, you know, been to prison like Julian has, or they've never had their liberty uh, taken away from them. And it's only, only, the, only, the, only the, the true journalists that uh, confront power, that, um, you know, tell the truth about the powerful, that, that actually suffer uh, the retribution uh, from power, you know, most, most, um, so I think that's, a, you know, what, you know, if you, if you're getting locked in jail or, you know, the, for, for, for publishing something, then you, you're probably doing the right thing. Uh, tell us about the movie that's coming up, because I'll use some of the footage um, from Father Dave's interview as well. So yep. tell us about the, the movie and, um, and then, yeah, afterwards you can tell me how we can help you promote it. But first, tell us about the, the movie, what it's all about, and... So the basic premise of the movie is a father's fight for his son. Um, so 
uh, you know, at the end of 2019, we started following John, uh, who's our dad, mine and Julian's dad, in his, in his quest um, to travel the world, to advocate for Julian, uh, to coalesce groups uh, all around the world. You know, there's, um, you know, there's, there's parliamentary groups in Germany and France who all, who all support Julian. Uh, and John has sort of traveled the world and sort of coalesced these groups. So we sort of follow him on his emotional, emotional journey to uh, fighting for his son. And we use John as a sort of a way into this story that, that we do, have never known before, you know, like this, uh, you know, what is the personal toll uh, really is, is, is the focus of the film. You know, we get behind, you know, we often have learnt about Julian through uh, through the media, through the media headlines, and uh, we wanted to sort of get behind those and and tell a different side of the story, uh, and get to know Julian in a different way as well uh, through the people who love him, uh, you know, rather than um, you know through the papers or through journalists. So mm -hmm. that's I think the really powerful part of the of the movie is that um, you know we learn about Julian in, in a totally new way, a new way. Uh, through John and through his fiancée Stella as they, um, you know, fight against the biggest adversary on the planet trying to free uh, their partner and son. Mm. What's it like, what's it been like for you as Julian's brother, observing all of this in terms of what you've learnt about him throughout making the movie? Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, for me it's been... You know, I, I think it's been very, you know, very rewarding. You know, like I said, the reactions that we've had uh, from the film um, have been, you know, really, really great so far. And, and it's, it seems to be working, you know, the film is doing what we intended it to do. And so that's been, um, you know, it's a lot of hard work, but, uh, you know, the payoff is so great. Um, you know, when we're getting more supporters out there, uh, more people joining the cause, uh, people who, you know, might have believed some of the fake narratives out there, you know, like uh, that that are sort of now questioning that and and seeing a different side and and thinking to themselves, well, have I been have I been lied to? You know, what what is what is true? You know, what is the real real story here? And I think that's uh, that's been, you know, to see something come to life like that, uh, mm. you know is really, really, really re rewarding in that sense. Um, what have I learned? I learned a lot about my family that I didn't know before, you know, because I'm, I'm the producer, but there's the director, Ben Lawrence. Okay. And um, so Ben did like 13 hours of interviews with John and uh, he was able to ask John a whole bunch of questions that I probably never would have. And um, so, yeah, sort of learned a lot about my family, uh, you know, through uh, through this experience, and it's pretty, um, it's pretty gut wrenching to sort of put it all up on a screen, put your family and personal life on a screen, and yeah. and you know just you know you just don't know how people re will react. So you you know just hope that it works, and and I think what we're doing, it, it, I think it works, and and that's you know really gives you energy to keep going, mm. basically. Uh, two last questions for you. Yep. Um, first, first of the last questions is, why do you think some people haven't heard Julian's story yet? Which is very strange for me because we are in literally at the forefront of the freedom movement in Australia and speaking to some you know, colleagues and stuff and they didn't know who, who Julian was and that's problematic for me. It's not a good thing. Uh, it's why haven't they heard his story? Well, I think, you know, it's such an ongoing uh, thing. It sort of waxes and wanes in, in and out of the media. Um, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the corporate media has a very sort of formulaic way that they approach these things. And, and if we're not engaged, you know, if we're not engaged, then, you know, how would you find out, you know, if you're not going out and doing your own research or, or things like that. But, um, I, you know, I hope this movie, you know, brings some more attention and we can raise up people to come, to come and, you know, be engaged and, and find out about what's going on with Julian 
uh, what it means, like what, what Julian's persecution means to uh, all our freedom, you know, our freedom to sort of know what our government does in our name. I think, uh, you know, Julian's, Julian's persecution is emblematic of that and people should, everyone should know about that and that's another theme in the film. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm not, yeah, well, I don't, well, who, yeah, who are these people? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got to get them. We've got to get them into the well. cinema. Get them, get them down. Right. and. Um, which is actually what I said to Father Dave. I said to him, you know, we have an extraordinary platform, which is why I wanted to, to yeah. speak to you today because, well, I mean, when I say extraordinary, we're, we're, we're babies compared to the US guys, but that's, it's a humble beginnings for us here in Australia. Um, we have a platform of over 200,000 people that we'd love to share this story with. Yeah. Um, so where can people see the movie? Well, there, there's two more screenings. So uh, tonight, uh, 6 p.m. George Street Event Cinema. And tomorrow at the Dendy Newtown, I think that one's sold out. Uh, that's at 3 p.m. Uh, and then we're doing a theatrical release early next year. So March, April, uh, we'll be going all around Australia. Um, yeah, so, you know, over 20 screens that we'll be coming to. So everyone will be able to get out there and, and check it out uh, at their cinema then. Fantastic. Yeah. So between now and then, what can we be doing? Well, I think, uh, you know, we did this... In, there was an interesting in, in Melbourne so uh, there was a, a woman who put together a petition right so there's a Friends of Julian group in the parliament uh, you know it's got um, Barnaby Joyce as a member uh, Andrew Wilkie from Tasmania uh, it's got 28 members or so uh, we're adding a sort of we're adding an MP into that group you know maybe every month now uh, and one interesting thing that we saw was in this electorate in Melbourne, uh, this woman who has a cafe there, she put together a petition and she got over, I think, 150 or 200 signatures, uh, you know, a petition to say to the local MP, we want you to join uh, the Friends of Julian group. So she was then able to go to an MP and said, look, all these people in your electorate, uh, they care about their freedoms, they care about uh, Julian being free and they want you to join this group and so then the MP uh, joined the group and tabled the uh, petition in Parliament so I think that was a really uh, effective mm. uh, simple way uh, for people to have their voices heard and and you know it feeds into you know democratic representation like uh, we delegate our power uh, to the people that we elect and so they have to represent us they have to represent what we want and uh, yeah, we, we need to take back, people need to take back that power, realise that they have the power uh, that we delegate it to our elected officials. And so, um, yeah, the, just yeah, take back their power and, and, and tell them what, what they want. Sounds fantastic. And yeah. I think that's a brilliant way to end it. Um, I think our audience will really resonate with that final message, especially at the local level. Uh, with local elections coming up, we're going to have a lot of conversations about connecting with local MPs. So I think it's a good time for us to, to bring, this, um, bring this to light as well. Yeah, while people their voices heard. Yeah, That's right. their voices heard. Awesome, Gabriel. Thanks for your time, brother. Cool. I Thanks, appreciate man. it, man. All good. Great.